What is up guys, you got Not The Worst here bringing you another Silver Prower breakdown and this time we are going over Basilisk Den. Uh, this place was recently revamped because it used to be completely terrible, uh, so I wanted to check it out after the revamp. Uh, they added a lot of more mob density to it to hopefully make it a more feasible grinding spot. Uh, so if you don't know where it is, it is out towards the Kadri Centaur area. Um, just past Alta Nova. So here you got Alta Nova out this way. I'm actually on my way there from Kudum right now. And this is the node for it too. Um, something else too, I didn't notice until I was halfway or so into the, the 20 hours on it. Uh, the node itself, there's some areas when you're grinding, it actually affiliates with the Gorgo Rock Belt node. Um, so I ended up putting a little bit of energy in there while I was there just because there are like certain areas in the rotation that uh, I use that that does come up. Not that it really makes a big impact, but just something to note if you are going to spend any amount of time there. Um, first few things I want to mention, as with any of the 20 hour grind videos, um, the variable things are pointed out. As you can see, I do have a level 10 node at Basilisk Den, which I did have the entire time. Uh, always had a comma blessing running while doing all 20 hours. My pet used to always be five tier threes. I actually got a tier four, so um, I looted with four tier threes and one tier four pet. Uh, my ecology also just leveled up today, but when I was grinding this, it was 5% uh, loot from ecology. I'm now up to seven, but that'll be for the next video. It was definitely 5% throughout all of this 20. Um, and then the last thing to mention again is I, when I'm doing these 20 hour grind videos, I'm watching Netflix, I'm doing other stuff. I'm not 100% engaged. So the trash loot can always be, you know, a decent amount higher. Um, once we look, take a look at the loot tables, uh, than what you're seeing I'm doing or what you can expect to do. So let me head on over that way and I will show you the rotation before we jump into the loot tables. All right, so we're out to the Bazzi Den node manager. This is my boy Rahim here, over here. When I see him, I like to ask him how things are going, how his kids are doing. Um, he's also got a daily quest for uh, Kafir's Stone. So if you are gonna grind this area at all, it's a pretty quick one too. It's only 250 mobs that you kill. Um, so the rotation I use, there's actually a few that are available in Bazzi and it has, now that the mobs are a little more dense, there's a little bit of freedom with other kind of rotations you could make up if it was actually busy. I hardly encountered very much um, PvP here at all. I think I only fought maybe three or four people in all 20 hours the entire time and even then running into other people was pretty uncommon but it did happen uh, especially since it was revamped. So I'm going to show you the rotation that I preferred. Um, I did try out a couple of other ones. Uh, this was the one that I got the best results from as far as trash loot but they were all pretty close to be honest with you within a you know a couple hundred so could have just been variable of other things how fast I was grinding at the time. But anyways make your way down this little ravine here a little ways and then we're going to have a little ramp to the right that's going to open up right here. Zip up this bad boy around the corner. And honestly, when you're starting, you could obviously just kill all these mobs on the way in. I'm going to run through the rotation as quick as possible. Uh, around this bend. You can also go up the stairs through the other way, right where Rahim was over to the right. And then there's a little bridge that brings you across from over there. Um, and then you can walk through here too. But I just go this way because it's what I'm used to. And this brings us into a little cave, which is where you can start your rotation. I use this this little round table of mobs here uh, because when I don't use them, I tend to over clear just a little bit. If I dive into this little outside of the circle thing and kill them, it keeps me right at about speed with rotation. This area here is just a straight circle all the way around with the mobs. Um, there's another chamber up above that's in a similar fashion. You can put your horse up there and you could, and it's also another viable rotation. It looks like there's somebody on my map running it right now. So that, but like I said, this is just the, the rotation I had the best uh, results from overall. Granted, they were really, really close to each other, so they might be right around the same. But as you can see, if you've been to the Bazzi before the changes, there are a lot more mobs at it. Not, I shouldn't emphasize the word lot like it's a ton. It's not a ton, but there are more. It does make this a bit more viable for a, a money per hour spot. That's at least somewhat decent. So you circle around here and we're about to get right back to where we started, right here. And then when I would get to this point, I would actually go into this room, wipe these dudes out uh, real quick and then kind of go from there. Um, something to point out though, they are a bit tanky. The recommended AP for this place is, it says is 190. So I'd probably say you need to be about 210 or so, um, depending on what your Kudum level is. 210-ish is probably okay. For the most part, you want to kind of group them up. Um, for a little bit and then use your bigger cooldowns to kind of take them down fast there. I don't have any buffs on me at the time. And just run with it that way. Grouping them is going to be a lot quicker than individually doing it and you're going to blow through your cooldowns um, if you're just uh, if you're just running through without actually um, if you're just running through without grouping them up in time you obviously run through cooldowns depending on your class of course as well. Things like Musa can burn through it a little quicker without having to worry about that. So there's your rotation for it. There's recommendations for it. Let me go ahead and get what everybody wants to see. The old 20 hour grind table which I have ready right here. Okay, so that's blank. Let me refresh. 
it wasn't that bad. Uh, it wasn't that amazing. Um, my total average was 38 mil per hour, which is definitely a viable grind area. If you're working on getting Bazzi belts or something like that, this place is probably worth actually doing it rather than just buying the Bazzi belts. My uh, trash loot per hour ended up averaging about 4,500. It's probably closer to 5K is where you could be doing with this. The first few hours I was kind of figuring out what rotation was working best for me before I started finally hitting some 46, 47, and then towards the end I kind of had it down. Um, so if I was really grinding like try hard mode, I, I would have hit 5k pretty easily um, on each rotation if you were just straight grinding, but I'm just kind of chilling when I do this. As far as how the silver actually breaks down Rokabas, I was averaging exactly 5 per hour, 3 scrolls per hour, which isn't too too bad for the spot, a crystal every 3 hours, around a Kafiris per hour, less dust than I was getting Kafiris, and that was pretty noticeable all the way across the board, and that doesn't include getting the Kafiris daily as well as available to you. Almost no Blackstone standard world drop rate here, nothing special, pedal same world drop rate here. Belt pieces, uh, similar to the Kadri video, I broke these down exactly the same. There's three belt pieces, snakeskin belt, the alignment pin, and then the basilisk ring. Um, so you need one of each of those. The ring can be combined, nine of them, into one alignment pin, and then five alignment pins can become one snake belt. So you assign each of them a value of one, and then it takes 45 of them to create a snakeskin belt uh, across from there. And then, of course, each alignment pin then is going to have a value of nine. Um, so that's why you see somewhere at like 10, it dropped an alignment pin that hour. And then also a ring piece, so that was 10 total, because again, one of those is nine ring pieces, so on and so forth. You need one of each to create into a belt, so it takes a total value of 55 uh, of the of this column. Uh, once you have 55, you can create a Bazzi belt, which is obviously worth 75 mil. Belt drops, I saw three throughout the 20 hours, which is pretty much in line with what we saw with the uh, Ruin Ring drop rate at Shira Ruins. Uh, we saw about every seven hours or so was the average right around there. And at 20 hours having three, it's a hair under seven hours, which is pretty much on the nose. Um, the Asula was just kind of whatever. I had a couple extra columns. So I just included the other stuff that you're getting, the traces that drop for minimal amounts of money and the Asulas. So that was the breakdown overall uh, for individual. The thing to note is, yeah, the 38 mil average sounds like it's not too bad. Um, I am also, it's, I do have soft cap, it's a tech kudum that I'm grinding with, so the AP is a little bit up there. If you're a little bit lower, it's going to be a little bit worse. And the other thing to keep in mind is it's very swingy. It's a real RNG heavy uh, zone, not really like we saw with Kadri, where because you have so many black stones, it was fairly consistent. And then you had some spiky numbers that were more when you had a Kadri ring drop or something like that. This place is pretty much all or nothing. You're either going to get a significant amount of belt piece, in this instance I had 11 with a belt drop there and you see the very next hour I got another belt so I got over 200 mil in two hours on that particular end but you look anywhere else you know we're floating in the 20s depending on scrolls and some belt pieces at 17 there was a 16 hour early on there's it's really low lows like really low lows and then um, really high highs obviously when you get a belt or a significant number of belt pieces that'll then translate into uh, more belts so keep that in mind as far as storage wise there's not a lot of trash loot that's here you'll get some rokaba and things like that so you can easily stack your horse up with the the uh, trash loot that drops onto your horse keep that stacked up and you could stay there for several hours um depending on exactly what your weight is at so it's kind of good for that as far as xp there's no marnie stones for bazzi uh and because the mobs are like big tanky mobs that take a little while to kill um it's not really efficient for an xp grind at all like at all silver drop rate there is enough to repair your gear for the most part um, overall, my final thoughts on this zone, with it revamped, it's definitely worth doing if you're working on a try or going for Ted Bazzi. Um, you could definitely farm here and make decent money per hour while going ahead and getting your actual Bazzi belts. Obviously, grinding a higher silver per hour place and then purchasing the belts is an option too, but this isn't bad if you don't want to do that and you're just trying to do a couple other things, especially having the scroll drop rates adjusted just slightly with extra mobs there. You know, it's at least something. There were hours, you know, five scrolls per hour, and then just a few where I only had like one to two. So it wasn't too bad getting that average at three was overall decent. But anyways, that's it for this silver breakdown video. Uh, if you are new, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you get updates of when we get new videos going live. I do a 20 hour grind video each week uh, with a new section. Next week's coming out is going to be oh, actually, I'm not sure. It's either going to be Crescents or I think it's Crescents, and it, or it might be Ronaros. Uh, Pilaku is still in the works, but uh, I haven't leveled the node up there yet, and I want to get it up at least a little bit, and I already have 10 at Ronoros and Crescent, so it'll be one of those two, which I'll be starting, so check out for that coming out next week, or possibly the end of this week, depending on how, how that pans out. Uh, make sure you like this video. If you did enjoy it, share it with your friends if they want to check it out. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Let me know what other spots you guys want to see. I know Pilaku's heavily requested. It's just I got to get that node uh, up there, so let me know in the comments what you guys think about other spots to grind, if there's something like a little off um, that's not... Uh, 
that's not something that's super common, a um, little off popularity that you recommend for doing, I will try and jump into that soon. It does take me about a week to get each of these grinds in because it's 20 hours. It's a lot. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Everybody, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.